Hi, my name is Dr. Trisha Ramprasad. I'm the core behavioral therapist. And today my guest is Norman Phelps. Um, Norman um, is an aerospace engineer. He's been um, at NASA for the past 16 years. And he's also still an, uh, an aerospace engineer for Kennedy Space Center, um, along with being a dynamics loads analyst. Um, Norman also happens to be family. He's married to my cousin, <laughs> Nisha Ramprasad. So oh. Norman, he's my cousin-in-law. So, <laughs> so I want to thank, thank you so much, Norman, for coming on my podcast. How are you doing today? I'm doing really good. How about yourself? I'm good. I'm good. Um, That's good. I really appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule. Norman um, has two kids, too, and he's got like a busy schedule, so he made time for this podcast. Um, no problem. Yeah, so let's get right into it. 2020. <laughs> <laughs> Is it over yet? <laughs> Is it over yet? I think we have six or five weeks left of 20. I know, I know. It's it's been it's been a year, right? It's been one that's uh it'll be it'll be one for the history books. <laughs> for sure. What what was this year like for you, being that you work for NASA and Kennedy Space Center and who you oh, man. are? You know, what was this year like for you? Uh it was like everyone. Um it was a year of change, a year of transition, not transition, but it was a year of just trying to adapt to whatever was going on. Right. Right. Um, you know, so COVID, I guess the shutdowns really started happening um, about the end of March. And so we were sent home to work telework um, in the March and we're still working from home. We haven't actually gone back on center yet. Wow. Um, well, I haven't gone back on center. Some people who are deemed um, they have to touch hardware, do launch operations and stuff like that. They're going in on site and stuff like that. But majority of the workforce is still in a uh, mandatory telework posture right now. Um, so that's been that's been different. But um, we we've actually launched two missions this year. We actually launched. Um, I work for Launch Services Program, so we actually launched in um, July. We launched um, the Perseverance rover. I'm pretty sure everyone heard about that. Right, yeah. And, and then this past weekend, we actually launched another mission out in Vandenberg, um, Sentinel-6, uh, Michael yeah. Freelich, which is going to be a climate change satellite. So we, it's been a really busy year, and that's not even counting right. um, some of the cr um, commercial crew launches that the center has done with, um, of course, we had Crew-1 this summer, and then we had, um, excuse me, Demo-1 this summer, and then we had the launch Oh, I think it was two weeks ago with the uh, with the crew one launch just to the International Space Station. So it's been a really busy year for NASA. NASA's done a lot of really cool things. It's mm -hmm. just been <laughs> trying to trying to you know do that in in a telework kind of pandemic environment, which hasn't been fun, but it's been it's been interesting. It uh, it sounds so interesting. I I mean I couldn't even imagine what it's like for what you do for a living and. Um, what you guys do for space and also working from home. I mean, you're grounded really in one section of your house, like working, I'm assuming. Um, what does that do? Like, what do you do to prepare yourself like mentally and emotionally? You know, that's actually a very good question um, because in a telework environment, as I'm sure you are aware, your interaction with people is just, you're not, you're not getting that, right? Like right. our, our, um, my program is a very collaborative program, like all, like most people's jobs, right? Like you, a lot of the work gets done in the hallway when you just run across someone and having to talk to someone. Um, so that aspect is definitely missing. Um, so what I do in the morning is I actually, I, I get up, um, I actually go for like a, I was swimming in the summer, like about a kilometer a day yeah. um, in the summer. <laughs> But given it's, it's getting kind of cold here in Florida, cold in air quotes, right? Right. Um, but I still get up and I go do some exercise. I, I, I make sure I ride my bike in the morning to get myself mentally prepared for the day. I try to make sure I have quiet time um, at the beginning of the day just to get myself mentally prepared to go to work, um, which is just like a corner in my, in my bedroom, right. <laughs> my, my, my office. But um, I think that time, taking time to kind of center yourself, settle yourself, get your breathing right. And you go from, um, go from, I guess, civilian to at work. You, you, I, I personally need that. Um, I can't just roll out of bed, throw on my clothes, and just go straight to work. I got to mentally prepare myself for that. Um, so that's, that's kind of what I do every morning to kind of get ready to go. I do, do the exercise, make sure I have the quiet time. I'm a Christian, so I make sure I have my devotion, my prayer, right. my, time with, um, my time in the scriptures. So 
Um, those things are very important for me just to set the to get the uh, details right and get the uh, routine right so that I can get the frame of mind to go to work. So that's that's so um, interesting and amazing that um, you work with science, you work with space, you work um, with NASA and Kennedy Space Center, and you're a Christian. What do you think about how does that how do those two worlds collide for you? Being that's a, a good yeah, that's a good question. I don't. I don't see them as colliding. I, I really don't. I see them more as in um, they're cooperating. I, I think number one, <laughs> science and science and religion they ask very different questions about the world. Right. Religion's about saving your soul. Right. Science is about examining the world and trying to come up with answers. So those they they really to me they they swim in two different lanes. Yeah. Um, and I, and I really do believe that scripture that's found, I believe, in the book of Psalms where it says that the heavens declare the handiwork of God and the, and the heavens to show his, his, his handiwork. And I, I really do believe that. I believe that um, you can look into the stars and you can see the creation and you can, the, the awesome wonder there, I think, just yeah. kind of smiles back on you and, and, and leaves you just how big and how great our God is. Um, so for me, that my faith is a source of um, comfort and um, I don't really see much. Um, much conflict there um it sounds like it's it's combined for you it's just one yeah right. exactly yeah now i realize that may be a, a minority view but that's 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 the view that i i look at it with so yeah. i think it's an interesting view because scientists or some scientists um so science is science right and then yeah when you put in god and religion into the equation it's your upbringing it's who you are so the fact that you can examine the stars and the universe and be like whoa look at this is what god created that's pretty awesome and go to bible scripture about that so are yeah. you like the only christian at your job or in your department that you work at no i'm actually not there's um there's actually we actually have a prayer group actually at, at work too so there's there was a group of us meeting when we was on site about seven of us um, that we would get together on Wednesdays and we would pray and study and stuff like that. Um, so no, I'm not, I'm not the only one. Um, definitely not the only one. So, I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I don't want to give you the impression that NASA is full of Bible believing Christians, but right. um, we're definitely, there's enough of us, enough of us there. Yeah. That's so, I think that's so, so awesome. Um, were you guys there for each other um, this year when all the turmoil was happening with Black Lives Matter? Stuff. Um, yeah, we were, um, I had a, I have a group of guys that we actually, uh, we actually did come together and we prayed with, um, and we actually tried to, um, get a dialogue going between different groups to try to just, A, A is kind of started out with just, Hey, um, <laughs> we're, all this stuff is going around in the world. Right. Um, and we're expected just to come to work and perform. Right. Right. And that's hard to do when you see just uh, chaos kind of spiraling around you. You're still supposed to just act like all that stuff doesn't happen and, and that it doesn't affect you, but it does. It does, yeah. And so our group first started out kind of more so as um, kind of, how are you doing today kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, and it's kind of, I don't want to say it's evolved, but the conversations are still going, going like, how are you doing? How are you handling? Um, how, you know, how are you coping and stuff like that? Um, so yeah, we do have those groups and we do have those discussions on, um, granted it's all in a telework environment or a virtual environment, but, but yeah, we do have those discussions. So what were your, um, answers as far as how you were coping or how you are coping? That's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very good question. Um, you go through, yeah, so this summer was very difficult obviously yeah you go through the gamut of emotions you go through the um at least i went through the i can't speak for everyone else but i went through the anger i went through the the i don't want to say confusion but the frustration right it's like why can't you see what i'm saying right um and then you come and then you um yeah, so you go through the anger, the frustration, and then you try to get to a point where you can come to where you can educate or you can be a bridge to try to have people see a different worldview or a different perspective. Um, so how we coped is 
a lot of communication, a lot of just mm -hmm. venting. Yeah. With um, allies. Wow. Um, allies meaning white people, like people who are just allies of various races and cultures. Both. Okay. Both. Awesome. Yeah. Both, but you have to. Um, you you have to. How do I say this? Um, you you want to be care. I I found that I have to be careful that I don't throw my pearls to swine. Right. Something that's very careful. Something that's very important to me. Yeah. I want to make sure that it's going to be well received. That it's not going to be. I want to make sure that the conversation is one where where my point of view is going to be appreciated, um, held sacred, adored, not adored. That's the wrong word, but no, you know, beautiful. just, that's actually <laughs> beautiful. Mormon. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. As, <laughs> rather than, you know, just ignored or that's not the way it is, you know, just, just kind of dismissed. Right. And so when I say allies, those were a group of people who you were able to have those conversations with. And then of course, then when you had to venture out to kind of tiptoe to kind of talk to others, you had to steal yourself with some armor. But those conversations are very important to have because if we just talk amongst ourselves, you won't change anybody's mind, right? Right. And so those conversations are very hard, very good to have too, but you, they take a different mindset. But right. one thing I will say though, and I think I'm talking too much here, but one thing I will yeah. say though. You're doing great. You're doing great. <laughs> one thing I will say though is that um, when someone asked how I was doing, I was honest with them. I didn't care who they were. That's so good. Yeah. So I'll say, how are you doing? I was like, I'm having a tough day. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, I'm having a tough day because I turned on the news and I saw this, this, and this going on. And it reminded me of this, this, and this that happened to me or my friend or something like that. Um, and this and was so, at Kennedy Space Center and oh, where you worked or in yeah. NASA and stuff? Wow. Okay. It happened, yeah, at Na where I worked, um, church members, yeah. um, neighbors, anybody. That I, I, I didn't try to sugarcoat what I was feeling. If I felt a certain way, I, I told them. Um, and if they tried to push back, I was like, okay, very well. Just kept moving. I didn't, I didn't try to, you could tell, quickly tell when you're, when someone is actually genuinely trying to enter yeah. a space of empathy and listening or, you know, trying to push back. So I think this, I think this woke up a lot of people. So you've, you've been going through this all your life. It's just now that it's been exposed, right? This year. So, you know, like, like what you said, you know, who, who would be empathetic, who would be open. And I also think that's therapeutic too. Um, and cathartic when you do release and, and say, hey, listen, I'm transparent about how I feel, regardless if it's the workspace, because you really have to be living under a rock if you don't know what's happening in 2020, yeah. especially yes. with the, with everything with Black Lives Matter and, and what have you and the injustices that happen. Do you yeah. feel like um, a lot of people, and by the way, all of Norman's opinions are his opinions. Um, yes, not exactly. NASA's and not Kennedy Space Center's. It's all of Norman's opinions um, and his experiences, which are valid. So um, when, so did you find that people were more, were receptive where you worked at or your coworkers when you were honest? I, I know that you just said that you can, you can pick and choose or tell. But were there some people who eyes were like awoken, who, who like got woke basically this year at your job and was like, wow, I really had no idea this kind of stuff was happening. Yeah, there were, um, there were quite a few people who came up to me and said, man, I didn't, I didn't know that it was this bad, or I didn't know that that's what it's like, or I'm really, I feel sorry for you that this is what you've had to walk through and carry. Mm -hmm. And, um, like you said, like I'm, I'm only speaking for myself and my own experiences, but I was really touched by our center director, or actually our center leadership in general. They, they, they came out really strong on, um, on racial justice. Um, our center director sent out a very strongly worded statement saying that racism is not tolerated here at Kennedy Space Center. Um, I, I can't quote verbatim what he wrote, but it, it actually was really, really touching, really well read what he, what it really well said what he wrote. Um, and so that was just one example from the top down. And, and they actually, there actually are a lot of, there were a lot of, um, a lot of activity, a lot of energy spent to trying to really try to build inclusion at the center, um, not just have diversity. What kind of activities do they have? Well, um, 
<laughs> I mean, I'm so interested in this. Like, okay, my mind is like imagining all these like NASA nerdy type of people, kind of like us, you know, doing groups and stuff. I don't know what does that, what does that look like. Yeah, I mean, that's a good question. <laughs> so, like, they had um. So first of all, they had um, a lot of listening sessions. So they had listening sessions. They brought in a couple speakers um, to talk. I mean, I'm not sure if you, uh, Professor, um, I'm not sure you're familiar with Professor Kendi, the guy who wrote the um, How to Be an yeah. Anti-Racist. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. The, the agency actually, through Johnson, brought him to, to talk to That's the so workforce. That's so awesome. Yeah, so they, they, um, they really went the extra mile to try to, to, try to just get the dialogue going. Um, my program is, is forming a unity group to try to, you know, figure out what we can do to get inclusion going. Inclusion is actually now one of NASA's um, guiding principles I, I, or mission statements or whatever. So that's, that's part of it now too. So there was a lot of energy, which is like just speakers, um, listening sessions. Um, yeah, workshop, not really workshops, um, but yeah, a lot of energy in that, in that kind of sphere. Wow. Um, that, was, that was really from the center director down, which was a big deal. Yeah. Deal, so. Do you kind of feel like you wish that they did this sooner, that it didn't have to happen like this? With all oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Year? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's, that's, um, yeah. I, I definitely wish it had been done sooner. They didn't take the, the loss of life of George Floyd to get that conversation going. Right. Um, but, I mean, I'm thankful that we're at least trying to have the conversation now yeah um uh, just me personally i'm a little concerned about the way that the conversation has gone throughout the rest of the country i think we may have gone backwards a little bit right and you living in florida <laughs> <laughs> i was just in florida okay. shout out to the floridians out there love you but <laughs> <laughs> But, yeah, yeah. We're, we're, we're a special breed. <laughs> <laughs> right. Now we're wonderful people. We, 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 uh, <laughs> we're, we're a very loving state, to say that. Right. It's interesting to say the least for this year to be um, living in Florida and doing all of this. I, I was there and I saw, um, not to get political, but people were having pro-Trump signs. And then we had some um, people having pro-Biden signs. I guess it depended on uh, the neighborhood. Or where? Oh, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. So, um, yeah. yeah, it's. Yeah, I mean, this the state is definitely the definition of a swing state. So you got both those opinions there. So. Yeah. 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 Can I ask some fun questions? I should have asked them in the beginning. Sure. Well, you know my sister Ria, and you know how inquisitive she is, right? So, yep. <laughs> um, can I ask you? five of her questions about space. Sure, go ahead. Do that? Okay, cool. One, how many planets can you see with the naked eye and why? Oh, wow, that's a good question. Um, <laughs> the naked eye, you talking about with the telescope? I don't know what she meant, maybe without the <laughs> telescope. <laughs> I'm right, so, talking about a serious subject and now we're talking about fun stuff, but. Yeah, so. Someone in your podcast is probably going to correct me here, um, but I I do believe the farthest planet you can see with just a telescope is um, I do believe it is Saturn. Oh, that's my favorite planet for some. Yeah, I think it's Saturn. Um, it may be Uranus. I'm not sure, right. um, but I think the furthest one you can see with just the telescope is is Saturn. Um, nice. Yep. Nice. I think Saturn was the last planet was known by the ancients. So Uranus is the first one that was discovered in modern times, like in the 1780s or something like that. Okay. Actually discovered by a woman of all planets. So a woman astronomer discovered, discovered Uranus, I mean. A woman? Yep. Wow, I didn't know that. Yep, a woman, a woman astronomer discovered it. She was working with, of course, the, um, the how do I say this gingerly? The, the patriarchy always wins in some sense. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so um, she was working with a credit. guy who took, who took, who took most of the credit, but yeah, she actually was the one who discovered it. So. Oh man, that's awesome. I, I we got to do some research on that. Um, is th number two, is there such a thing as space garbage? Oh yeah. <laughs> oh my yeah. gosh. Can you talk about that? 
Oh yeah. Um, there are environmentalists out there. Well, yeah. Like anytime we, th- any, there's so much, so many satellites that have just been decommissioned. They didn't enter the atmosphere. They're just still circling the planet. There's old <sighs> rocket boosters. Um, what if they come and gravitate towards Earth? Like, can that happen, or it's too just too far away? No, they do, but some of them are, are just have just enough energy that they just they just stay in orbit. And so there's there's a lot of space junk up there. It is space junk, space degree. Um, NORAD actually tracks most of it, and it's one of the things that we yeah. actually have to to keep track of when we're when we're launching a satellite. It's like, what else is up there? <laughs> so NORAD is um, the mich- the space um, machine oh. that, that that was kind of roaming on one of on Mars or where say was- that again. Where, what can you explain what NORADAC was? Oh, NORAD? Yeah, NORAD. Oh, NORAD is, oh, well, I'm going to butcher it. It's the um, North American Air Defense or something like that. So basically it's based out of Cheyenne Mountain. It's the Air Force. Okay. They, they track, like all, they monitor the North American airspace. So they actually track all the, um, the um, space junk up there in space also. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for that. Number three, what's the easiest way to describe the black hole? Oh, let's see. Absence. It's just um, a black hole is when a star or something collapses in on itself. Mm-hmm. So it's just it's just gravity just collapsing in on itself, sucking everything in. Oh my goodness! So it sucks every. So light can't even escape. So it's literally just sucks in everything. Wow. Okay. Um. Do you know where it leads? When it's um, I, I I don't um. <laughs> That's a re- that's my sister's question. <laughs> These are my sister's questions. No, I mean, there's a lot of theories yeah. about it. I mean, yeah. someone on your podcast is going to try to correct me, I'm sure. But, like, there's some okay. people who think that if you go through one, it's the quickest way to another point in the universe. Wow. Um, yeah, so there's some theories there. Some people say if you go through one, you can go backwards through time. I mean, it's, I, I'm not – that's, that's more of a – that's more of a astrophysicist question. I don't – I'm not the expert there, so – what if there's people who believe in time travel? What would you say to them? I, I would say, where are the time travelers if they believe in time travel? <laughs> I, don't, I don't see any time travelers. I mean, just, just think about it. Can you imagine if time travel existed? Like, that would be so awesome. It would be, but like every historical event, you'd see all these people just show up just to take <laughs> pictures and just show up with their selfies to put it on Instagram. It, it, like, oh my goodness. Yeah, so, yeah, so I, don't, I don't believe. I don't. I personally don't believe, but I, I think there's some physicists, I think the other day discovered a way to actually say time travel could actually exist, but I didn't, I didn't read the paper or read the article or something like that. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. Um, we'll save it for the movies, I guess. <laughs> Five. The last one um, that's interesting. Has there been actual intellectual life in space besides humans from earth? Meaning are there aliens? No, not that we've found so far. Okay. We haven't even found microbes yet on, in on another planet. Although we think, we don't have that we think. Um, we have not found microbes on another planet. We don't think we found microbes on another planet. But I am certain that we are going to find microbes on another planet because we will have brought them there. <laughs> well, you so, brought them there, you said? Oh, yeah. Yeah, ah. so because every, I mean, every spacecraft we send up has to be properly cleaned, right? They, they try to make sure there's no bacteria or anything on it. Right. But bacteria's life finds a way, to quote Ian Malcolm from Jurassic Park. So I'm pretty yeah. sure that we have brought something to another planet somehow, just un- unbeknownst to us. So. so that brings me to, and correct me if I'm wrong, okay? So you know how the Bible says that there's going to be a new earth? Okay. Do you think that there's a new earth somewhere out there? Um, that was above my pay grade. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I yeah. I, I'm, I'm I'm just trying to I'm just trying to um I'm just trying to make it into the kingdom. So we'll just we'll, we'll let God we'll let God do his thing. <laughs> same here, same here. Do you think there's like a planet out there with water? Yeah, we've actually um, we've okay. So so Enceladus, which is a um, which is a, a moon of a moon of Saturn actually has ice geysers and mm-hmm. it's actually shooting water vapor into space. Yeah. 
And so we've actually found water on a moon of Saturn in our solar system. So, and, and we what? have, yeah, I, so we, there was a reason why it was my favorite planet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, um, um, Europa, that Europa is actually a moon of Jupiter and we believe that it actually has a lake underneath it. And I think, oh, although this is amazing. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's surface right. is made of water ice. Europa's surface is actually made of water excuse me, of water ice. Mm -hmm. So we've actually, there's actually ice on your, on the moon of Europa. So we've actually discovered water on other solar systems. I mean, other solar systems, other moons in our, in our solar system. Um, on so, the moon. So how come, do they, do they, um, did you guys put out like statements on this and stuff? Is it published? Yeah, or it's all published. It's all published. Um, we actually, for the one that was Enceladus, they actually flew um, a spacecraft through those geysers throwing the water vapor into space and they actually yeah. they flew cassini through it which is the mission that we had going around saturn and they actually took samples of it and stuff like that um so th that stuff's all published wow. stuff's all published yeah i love how you could vacillate between you being you right this yeah. year and then and then just switch to being um you know how you're an aerospace engineer like that's your world and your father and your what do you teach your kids about what do you talk to your kids about this year being who oh, you are. yeah um yeah that's a really that's a really interesting question really that's a really uh interesting question what have we told them um number one you just gotta create us we, we try to create a safe space for our kids yeah to let them know that whatever happens that they're going to be safe that they're going to be okay that there's no need to fear um and we just told them that hey i mean everything is going to be all right you know yeah um, you're, you're going to be fine we're 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 blessed in a sense that we still have a roof over our head we still have clothes on our back and food on our table so all those things are taken care of um that there's there's no need for you to worry about anything all those things are taken care of and um we're going to get through this basically yeah um, and yeah. just try to keep them just um we don't let them watch the news. <laughs> yeah, that's just for your mental health sake and your emotional health. It's difficult to keep watching the news. I agree, especially you for young kids. You can't, you can't turn it. You got to turn it off because um, they, I they they get they would get really afraid, really fearful, and so then you have to, of course, talk to them, explain what's going on, and 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 don't sugar. I didn't never. I never sugarcoated anything to them. I told them exactly what's going on. But yeah. then also told them, don't, you know, but we're going to be fine because of X, Y, and Z. So it's giving them that assurance that, hey, we're still going to be fine. Yeah. And that even if we're not fine, we're still going to be together as a family and we'll get through it. So that, that sort of thing. So, um, yeah. So even, so we'll always be taken care of. We'll always be together um, regardless of what happens. So that's kind of what we try to tell them. And also to our faith has come in there too, that, you know, God's always going to protect us and he always has a plan for us and that we know we just have to trust in that plan that everything's going to be okay. Yeah. So our, our faith has also been a source of, of, of strength there as well. So, yep. That's, that's so awesome. Um, so what's it like for you being in our family, being part of our family? Cause you're in a biracial marriage. What's yes. it like for you? <laughs> He's married to a beautiful Indian, Indo-Caribbean woman. <laughs> Yes, I am. She's, she's, I, I, I married up. I always say I married up. So. She's a boss. She's a nurse. She's a <laughs> yep. nurse and she's pretty awesome. So what's yeah. this year and, and explaining things to your kids and stuff, what's that like for both of you? Yeah. So, um, that's actually a very good question because my, our kids are blessed in a sense that they didn't, especially this year, we had to kind of tell them that people may treat you differently because of the way you look. Right. And so that's actually a good thing in a way that we had to inform them of that because <laughs> they hadn't yet really experienced racism in that way. Yeah. Um, but, um, but being in your family, being um, in a biracial relationship, it's, I mean, I have no qualms. Your family's accepted me with open arms, loving arms. Um, it's been great. It's been, it's been the good thing about, about our kids too, is that they, they get, they get just this, you know, this cacophony of culture. Right. Yeah. So like they got, 
the African American culture from my side of the family. They got the India Caribbean from your side of the family. Yeah. Um, my brother in law, my sister in law is Russian, so they get the Russian aspect there too. So I mean, they get they get all of that. Yeah. And so they're kind of seeing already that the world has a lot to offer if we're just willing to open our eyes to other cultures and see see the eyes see see the world through someone else's eyes. Yeah. So, yeah. So I think in that sense, it's been really good for them. That's just, that's beautiful. It's, I'm, I'm really happy um, they don't really watch the news as much too. Yeah. Because, you know, I can't help but think about Trump, you know, and the things he said. And it, and it wasn't just hurtful to people. It was hurtful to children as well. Like, I saw the news and one child was, was like, do we need to get a gun or are we going to be okay yeah. with type of thing? So when I think about him, um, he does boast a lot about NASA has done so much this year. Has he ever visited Kennedy Space Center or NASA? Yeah, he has. He, um, he, um, he, okay, so he visited during the launch that we had, the Demo 1 launch. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm going to mangle the date, so I'm apologizing. I think it was That's in okay. July that he came. Mm -hmm. um, so basically, that was the first launch. That was the first launch of the commercial crew program that we actually sent. Americans back into space from U.S. soil, so that was a that was a big deal. Um, so yeah, he actually showed up on center for that for that launch. Um, so I'm really trying to. These are my opinions. These right? are Paul Norman's opinions, not NASA's, not, not the Space Center. This is exactly. Norman. So I, it's it's really hard to give credit to any administration, really a lot for what NASA does because budgets kind of go through administrations, right? So for instance, the commercial crew program that actually returned astronauts into space was actually a program that was founded under President Obama, right? Right. But it actually saw fruition and actually come into completion under President Trump. So in that respect, it's, you can't really say it's a Trump program or you really can't even say it's an Obama program because it kind of spanned both administrations, right? And that's the good right. thing about the, about the space program is that it's, traditionally been very bipartisan. It's been a place for all Americans to say, here we can come together and we can do something great for both our country and the world. And so that's, that's the beauty of the space program. So. That, that is beauty. It's awesome just coming together, not being bipartisan. So that's pretty awesome. I want to thank you so much, Norman, for coming right. on my podcast. Um, if people want to get in touch with Norman, um, you can get in touch with me. <laughs> He doesn't, he's not on social media or anything. No, I'm not on social media. No. That's for mental health reasons. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually a very healthy thing. <laughs> a lot of, a uh, lot of self-care there, Norman. A lot right? of self-care, a lot of self-care. <laughs> a lot of self-care. Well, I want to thank you so much. I appreciate you. I love you, Nisha, and the kids so much. And thank you. we're very proud of you. We're proud that you're, you're family and, you're amazing and we love you. So thank you so much for being part of uh, my podcast. No problem. Thanks for having me. Okay. Bye everyone. Bye Norman. Yep. Bye.